Hi, hi guys. Uh, uh. So I think uh, I think we're just going to start now. So this is uh, this is just a pretty casual discussion. Obviously, we have a panel uh, chat right now about uh, what's it like to actually work uh, in a startup. So it's a pretty good accident that I'm actually moderating this. I'm not actually part of the panel. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Derek. Um, I run a platform called Warp. So we help people. You look for the company, the right work culture uh, for them. Uh, so a bit of shameless advertisement here. Go check us out. We're pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I just want to introduce the panel uh, quickly. Uh, not in any particular order. We have uh, uh, Josh Teng from uh, Televate. Uh, Josh is uh, the founder of Televate.io, uh, Televate a cloud-based uh, lead response system uh, that helps uh, businesses convert more leads by swiftly responding to an inquiries through the use of automated contact forms. Uh, born and raised in Kuala Lumpur and partly educated in Atlanta and San Francisco, uh, he's a big supporter of the KL Rugby community. Uh, we have uh, Iswan Ismail from VLT Labs. Uh, Iswan is the curator uh, of UX Malaysia. More recently, uh, he co-founded uh, Superhands, a virtual assistant service designed to help busy individuals just like us, uh, to get things done. Uh, he's the UX practice lead in VLT Kuala Lumpur and uh, in VLT Labs. We have Aaron Gill uh, from My Taxi. Uh, Aaron's a seasoned entrepreneur who has tasted the ups and downs of technopreneurship in uh, Malaysia. Since launching My Taxi in 2012, uh, things have definitely looked bright for Aaron and the My Taxi team, which is now a regional powerhouse in the taxi and private car booking space, I'm sure all you would have known, uh, would have used my taxi at some point. Uh, Aaron himself has also joined the ranks of tech rock stars. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says, dude. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> well, I didn't write it, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, by lending his time and experience uh, with various uh, startup and tech events uh, in this region. Uh, and then we have uh, Joash Rhee, uh, he's a general manager for Southeast Asia uh, for VCNC, uh, which is a value creators and a company. So Joash is uh, uh, leading the regional expansion of a couples app uh, called Between. Some of you might have uh, maybe even used it before. Prior to VCNC, Joash headed the editorial team at uh, E27 as editor, uh, covering key developments in the tech startup industry. Uh, he's born in Kuching, he's Malaysian. Uh, and graduated from the National University of Singapore, uh, Joash uh, spent his university years co-founding a digital publishing platform. So pretty, pretty experienced uh, people we have here uh, today. Now, before I jump straight uh, into the topic, just to get a sense of what the crowd is like here uh, in this room, I mean, how, how many of you guys actually really care about, I guess, the work culture and the environment that you actually work in? So maybe uh, we'll, we'll rate it from one to five, right? Okay, so five is high. So five means I really, really care about working in the perfect environment for me. And one means, you know, uh, I don't give a, I, I, I don't care, you know, just put me in a shithole, uh, give me a job. Okay, so uh, <laughs> should we start with uh, five? Do we have any fives here? Cool, all right. Uh, fours, fours, threes. All right, oh, threes. Any twos? I hope there are no ones. Do we have any ones? Oh, excellent, cool. So, all right. <laughs> so, we're in the right room. <laughs> uh, now, before I um, uh, move on to uh, the actual panel discussion, I just want to quickly uh, introduce the topic itself about why, why we think this is actually, uh, uh, this is actually pretty important. Uh, personally, I've known uh, I'll tell you a story about a friend that I, I've known for many years. Uh, this is someone that, uh, uh, he actually graduated from a very, very good university last time. Top, top of his class, he worked in the UK. And when he graduated, he, he thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've got all these credentials behind me. You know, I want to work in a large corporate company, right? Because that's what you do. You know, he said, oh, I may want to work in an investment bank. You know, maybe I want to work in a management consultancy business. And that actually came true. So he got a really, really good job in a consultancy firm in London. I still remember he was so happy and all that, so celebrating. And it was all really good. Uh, I guess until several years into the role, uh, because of the way he is, because he's, uh, 
uh, he's a very uh, maybe creative type person. He likes growing things, and he likes a lot of uh, freedom to make decisions. But when you're in a large corporate company, uh, the advantage is you're trained really, really well to do one thing, you know, uh, but there are a lot of rules and things like that, so there are, there are a lot of restraints. So he couldn't really express himself uh, properly in that environment. And for, for a while, because he couldn't get promoted in his job, uh, he actually told himself, you know, that this lie that he wasn't any good. Like, he was very depressed. He said, oh, wow, you know, I'm not actually progressing in my job. You know, uh, maybe I'm not that good after all. But this is obviously not true. Uh, with him, um, the, the problem was he was just, he was a very talented person, but he was working in the wrong type of environment that was actually suitable for his uh, kind of personality. So eventually, this friend of mine, which I cannot reveal for confidentiality reasons, is actually working in a startup uh, right now in Malaysia, and is doing really, really well. Is the startup called Wob? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this about you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to guys. <laughs> but personally, even myself, my own story, I was... Uh, Kind of like that. I used to uh, do auditing in uh, Ernst Young in London. Uh, so I was one of those people that, hey, you know, I, I have to get in the big, work in a big corporate company. But it didn't really work. Uh, I didn't really enjoy it that way. So not to put you guys off, being an auditor, I think it's great. You know, some of you will really like it. Uh, but it wasn't really uh, for me. La. <laughs> so from, from the story that you told, you kind of tick, like, tick one, tick right. two, London. <laughs> I'm climbing, supposed to be uh, interviewing you guys, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> this is what this chat is basically about, guys. It's about, I guess, uh, looking at very talented people and, you know, very capable people, you know, like what we have here, and showing people that, you, you know, there is a, that you have a choice, right? So, these guys could um, obviously have gotten a job in a large corporate company, no problem, you know, but they obviously choose to work in the startup environment. So, we want to help people. Uh, so, it's not about telling you guys, hey, come and work in a startup because I don't think it's necessarily suitable for everyone, but to let you guys know actually what's it actually like, you know, being in an environment, and maybe you could actually excel here rather than working in a large corporate company. So, um, I think to start off, maybe we get everyone to introduce themselves uh, and their business, and maybe some brief thoughts of what they think about culture and what's it like in a startup. So, maybe we start with uh, Josh, we go sure. this way. Uh, so, yeah, I run a company called Televit. Uh, Televate is an enterprise telephony software company. Uh, essentially, our core focus is to solve the problem of long call center wait times. Uh, you know how sometimes when you call, let's say, airlines, and this, this is during peak hours, you might have to wait like 30 minutes, 45 minutes on hold. Uh, so our solution essentially helps these enterprises remove the unpleasant experience of long call center wait times. Uh, but on top of that, I actually do want to mention, you know, since today is also career fair and stuff like that, uh, I'm also running a program called Code Division. And Code Division is essentially a program to teach people how to code. Um, we, our goal is to help, you know, passionate individuals learn how to code within nine weeks and become world-class beginners. Um, and we are working alongside Magic with this. So Magic has been very supportive and Magic is giving out uh, scholarship to students who wants to attend this program. Um, so yeah. Um, but speaking of work culture, I have a confession to make. Um, I actually got fired from my first two jobs. And I've not really told too many people uh, about this. But one big reason was that I felt very unmotivated when, when I was working uh, for these companies. I was working in the States back then. Um, and I think, you know, having starting my own company, uh, what I really like about, about thing is work culture is something that you feel every single day. You know, I wake up motivated. I wake up energized. I wake up with a sense of purpose. And I think this is ultimately what we want in our lives because we spend a huge chunk of our life working. Like, why don't we wake up excited? Why don't we wake up on fire? And I think... You know, when you work in a startup environment, this sort of, um, in, in a good startup environment, not every startup, but, you know, a good number of startups are like that. And we place a lot of emphasis on culture. And what, what do we mean by culture? Um, I'm sure a lot of people have watched the movie, The Internship. And, you know, you see, like, slides in, in the office. You see, like, free food in the office. But come on, guys, you know, we can do better than that. It's not about the perk. 
you know, it's about how you feel. And, and ultimately, you know, you want to work in a company that, you know, you, we are all relatively young in this room. Um, it's like, you know, wake up feeling, feeling good. And how do you get there? You know, you keep exploring different places and, and so on. Uh, but, you know, the mechanics of it is a bit of an art, how to develop a good work culture, and it's a lot of trial and error. Uh, you know, perhaps some of the other panels will have a lot more experience on this. So, yeah, that's what I think about cool. All right. work culture. All right. yeah. Thanks, Josh. So maybe you go to uh, Aaron. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, my taxi's uh, reason for existence, or its uh, reason that is... Uh, basically, we we wanted to fix the taxi problems in uh, Malaysia, uh, as KL especially, because it was a horrible uh, experience in Kuala Lumpur to catch a cab, and uh, we we approached it in a different manner. Uh, we, uh, I mean, the regulators and the enforcement would be like, you know, uh, I punish you, the driver, for for not. Uh, for not doing the right thing. We, on the other hand, uh, approached it differently. We approached, we approached the problem as in, you know, why do drivers overcharge? Why are they rude? And things like that. And it really just boils down to they don't earn enough. So, so we said that we're going to help them earn more uh, through technology, uh, make their life more efficient, uh, get, them an, uh, no, get them a taxi, get them a passenger which is uh, near to them so that they don't have to spend time and costs driving around looking for customers. And we believe that uh, happy drivers would, uh, would uh, then produce uh, happy passengers. So happy drivers equals happy passengers. And we really only had two objectives. Uh, help drivers make more money and uh, help uh, female passengers feel safe. That's really, that's really it. Um, not that we don't care about the guys, but, <laughs> but I mean, if you can make, uh, if you can make your mom, your your sister, your daughter feel safe, then I'm sure you would feel safe as a guy too, right? Uh, and uh, we probably save uh, boyfriends a lot of uh, headache. You know, always they have to drive their girlfriends around. Now they just they take my taxi, send me the link, and I know whether you get home safe. That's awesome, right? So, so yes, that was my uh, community service to. Uh, all boyfriends out there and husbands. Uh, so basically, uh, we started off with uh, six uh, people. Uh, we worked out of a meeting room first, and then we worked out of a storeroom, which we tumpang in somebody's office. Uh, so great. I mean, now so six people. Now we're uh, that was about two and a half years ago. Uh, we're in six countries now, sixteen cities. We I I can't remember how many people. I think like 500 plus people already. Um, but uh, the, the engineering team, which I now look after, I used to look after many things, but uh, now I look after product. Uh, and uh, So the product, the UX and the engineering team is only uh, 40 people. We're looking to hire 20 more. The culture has changed, uh, definitely from the six people to to the 40 people in my own team. Uh, it's definitely changed. And, and maybe that's where I can lend perspective in terms of the startup stage as well as the, the growth stage, which is the stage that we are in right now. Uh, and culture is key, really, uh, when, you, when you're in the growth stage because uh, I, think, I think it's really, it's, it's effing amazing to work in a startup. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's not about the perks. It's not about, you know, hey, you know, I'm in a startup. It's cool, right? Uh, I get to come into work at noon. Uh, but... <laughs> But it's not about that. The, 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 the thing about startups, the great thing about startups is the people it brings uh, together. And uh, it, it, uh, certain people work in startups, and these people are the guys who go, uh, and girls, who go against the grain, uh, who defy conventions, uh, who, who look at the bright side of life, right? Who look at the positive of things, uh, and uh, who never give up. And, uh, and really, I mean, life is just too short to work under an incompetent boss, uh, work with colleagues who always uh, politics and tai chi and move, shift blame around. It's just, life is just too short for that, right? Uh, and you want to get up on fire going to work. And that's what startups uh, bring to the table. Uh, and culture is key because the moment someone who doesn't fit that culture 
joins your team, it breaks down, right? And, uh, and that's, where, well, that's what happens at growth stage, right? You start hiring for the sake of hiring. Uh, so you just end up firing a lot of people. Or they, well, I, I prefer the term ask to leave. Uh, but, but basically, it's important, right? If you don't get rid of the wrong type of people, then your culture, uh, your culture is threatened. And what is this culture? Every, every company, every startup has its own culture. And you need to find the startup with the culture that you resonate with, you know? You, you might not, I mean, you might want to be the guy who comes in at 12, but maybe the culture of the startup is not that, right? You know, you see, you come in at 9 a.m. in the morning, everyone's already looked like they've been working for an hour and then they don't go back at 9 p.m., you know? It's not because they're, like, pretending to work. They're, they're actually working. They want to make a difference. And in startups, you can make a difference. Uh, no matter how small your contribution is, you're making a huge difference, right? And you can't get that anywhere else, you know, unless you're, like, Homer in a nuclear, uh, you know, <laughs> nuclear power plant and right. you accidentally press, press the wrong button, then, yeah, you make a big difference. Uh, Homer Simpson, in case... Some of you don't watch The Simpsons, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, you just want to make a difference, you know? You want to create value. You just want to come to this world and just create value instead of destroying value, right? You want to create value, and if you don't go back to bed at the end of the day, feel like you've done something great, uh, then yeah, it's probably you need to move, right? Pick something that you, where you can make a difference. Actually, Aaron, I have a question for you. Um, so obviously, a lot of people out there have different interpretation of what culture is and what they want for themselves. Yes. Um, you know, at my taxi, how how would you you know give advice to people um, to sort of explore what they want? Like, how would they find out what your company culture is? Is it like an interview, or is it like working there for a day to try it out, or how's it like? So. Uh we do have an onboarding process, which we, uh, we, we have the candidate uh, join us. So candidate takes maybe three to five days, uh, if he's still working with someone, take three to five days leave. Uh, this is post, uh, post going through the, 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 the screening uh, tests and the two interviews. Then you, you, we have about three to five days of uh, onboarding to see whether you actually fit with our culture. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, really working with the team is the key, right? Then you make a decision, right? Whether you want to join us or not. So if you pass the three, we have a three-step uh, process to, to actually get an offer letter. And then after that, before you agree to actually join us, you, we, we strongly advise you to, to spend some time with cool. us, uh, work side by side with the team pair program, or if you're a test engineer, or if you're a UX designer, work with the team, work on something, right? Uh, we're starting to do this now, because uh, we didn't do it before, because we, we just needed more people, but we're starting to do this now. Cool. And uh, it's, it's proven to be uh, way better. Uh, we try to make things fun. It can be pretty, pretty stressful in uh, my taxi, because uh, thousands of people rely on us every day. Uh, we used to go down, I, uh, I, mean, I can say about it now, you know, we used to go down every Friday, <laughs> every Friday evening we used to go down, our system would go down. We process, at peak hours we used to process 40 bookings per second and we used to go down, our systems would go down. So now what we do is we have a happy hour at, uh, during that time, right. Friday during that time. And, you know, we have food. Since the system is down anyway, then. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, if we don't get the system up and running and stable, we'll, we lose right. the chance of having our happy cool. hour every so week. So basically, beer and pizza keeps my Stuff later, right. yeah, yeah. And <laughs> interact with other departments and things like that. All right. So uh, just, just so that we can get on with the also interest. So we come back to the question stuff uh, in a bit. Uh, so maybe, Josh, you can introduce yourself. Sure, yeah. Um, so I work for a company called VCNC. Uh, we are based in uh, South Korea. And uh, our focus is very similar to my taxi. We want to bring value, uh, but where we see the point uh, where we want to bring value is uh, in the relationship, the most intimate relationship that you have uh, right now, which is in a couple's relationship. So we built an app. It's a private space for two. Uh, we want to make we want to make couples feel that they are secure. They're constantly uh, able to communicate and con um, connect with their significant other. 
right? And um, and similar to my taxi, we we save a lot of boyfriends as well because uh, we have a very important feature called a reminder feature. So you make sure that you don't forget uh, anniversaries, weddings, all the key dates. Um, so yeah, we, we I mean boyfriends mainly because most of our users are based in Asia. So Asian boyfriends, yeah, a lot of them are alive uh, because of between. Um, oh, a bit about myself. Um, so I think I may be slightly different from my background compared to the rest of the guys. Um, right now, I'm not uh, working in, a, in a, a company that I founded. I'm actually working for a startup. Um, and actually, I've always been working at a startup. So when I first graduated, actually before I graduated, I worked at a, another company called E27. They're actually um, you know, recruiting here today. Uh, yeah, Dennis is there. Um, so how I actually got my job was uh, during uh, my student years, I volunteered for a free internship for six months. Um, basically, sold my soul. The reason was because um, back then, I mean, if you guys are mostly, most, most of you guys are like freshly graduates or are still studying, um, you will know that work experience is something that all the companies require you to, to, to kind of include in your resume. So as a student, you know, where do you get that? And um, the best way to do it is to, to really just look at a startup because startups are hungry. Startups, are, first of all, they don't have a lot of resources to hire, um, yet at the same time, they want, to, they want and they need to do a lot of stuff. And uh, if you can, um, you know, some ways bring value to them, um, you know, by, say, volunteering your time, and you, know, you don't actually, actually need to be paid during that time because you're studying, uh, what's more important than money at that time is actually getting, getting the experience, getting the connections. And, you know, during that six months, I met... Um, through E27, there are you know, events, they're, you know, they're, they're regional reach, uh, even, even global in some sense. I've met guys um, who are starting startups from all around Asia. I've met VCs. I've met corporate guys who work in telcos and, and, and different, you know, different industries just because they, were, they are dealing in startups. And this got me through things like uh, you know, when I signed on full-time at E27. So they, they liked what I did during my, my, my internship. And they gave me an offer before I graduated. And after that, you know, my experience at E27 also led me to connect with my current job. So if you look at how that kind of flows, right, you're, you're investing in yourself, right? You're, you're giving up some of your time, which as students, I mean, come on, we, we actually have a lot of time. Um, you know, um, other than going to class and all that, we end up playing the Dota and you know, stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I decided to use that something, uh, you know, to kind of invest in my future. Cool. So, all right, so uh, yeah, maybe Isvan, you can tell us a bit about business and what you think about. Um, I, I guess before that, I just want to know, like, how many of you guys are um, from universities who just recently graduated? Can you just put up your hands? Guys that are looking to switch from corporate life to something else? The guys that just don't know what to do? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, <laughs> okay, cool. At least, at least now I know who I'm talking to. Um, so, a little bit story about myself. Um, I graduated as an industrial designer. I worked as a product designer um, in a factory. And then I jumped into medical software design. Uh, that's where I learned user experience design. And then I moved into a startup. Uh, that's where I learned a lot about a lot of things. Uh, and then I was jobless uh, for a couple of months. Uh, and then I was working for two jobs. And then, and now I'm here um, with VLT Labs. So what I'm trying to say is that everybody's on a journey. And this is something that I share with everyone as well uh, when I talk to. Everybody's on a journey. Um, and working with a startup is a journey. Yeah, um, the founders will go through a lot of stuff. Um, when you sleep, sometimes you sleep talk. Um, or you just don't know whether you're sleeping or not. Uh, all of a sudden, you just realize you, you woke up. Um, it's not easy. I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up. Working with a startup is not easy. Working for a startup is not easy. We're working on your own startup is not easy. This whole industry is not easy. But it's the best thing ever. And why is it the best? It's because in a team of startups, your, what you have to say matters. What you know matters. You don't work on one thing. You work on multiple things. If you're a designer and you're asked to do marketing, do marketing. If you're a designer and you suddenly have to code, learn how to code. Even if it's crap, it's okay. Because what's going on is that you're working with a lot, I mean, a bunch of people who are passionate. And passion is something intangible. 
but you can see the fire. Passion is something that, that's kind of crazy, you know? It, it hits you in the face and you don't know what to do with it. So what I'm trying to say is that working with a startup, you'll learn a lot more. The pace that startups move is really fast. We move in the pace of internet. What is this pace of internet, right? How fast is internet? Internet is as fast as the speed of darkness. I'm not even talking about the speed of light, I'm talking about the speed of darkness. Before a light would reach to a point, there's darkness. So that's how fast we need to move. Things keep on changing, and a lot of competitors keep on popping up. You just cannot be left behind. So if you're going to work with a startup, be ready to challenge yourself. That's the main thing. So one of the things that we do with VLT Labs is that we help founders build MVPs. Um, we work with them, we collaborate with them on design and development, and even helping to launch their products. Some of the startups that we work with is superhands.com. Uh, the guys are just outside, you can go talk to them. Uh, scarletosoho.com, it's an online eyewear base in London. And these guys are founders with amazing drive. We just love it. All right, cool. Okay, so, um, so I'm just going to move on to a bit of a Q&A session. If you guys have a burning question you want to ask, uh, you can tweet that later and uh, make sure you put the hashtag MSA launch. Uh, so we have 10 minutes at the end where you guys can also ask questions and also answer your phone. <laughs> uh, so uh, so I'll, I'll be asking the question and then uh, I guess depending on who wants to take the question, you can just, uh, yeah, you can just answer that way. So uh, I first want to, obviously we talk a lot about, yeah, you know, uh, working in startups is really cool and all that, but maybe someone can kind of kind of describe what, what is the startup culture? How would you actually describe it in very, in very simple terms? And how is it kind of different from, say, working in a corporate type of environment? Um, well, also I'll just go. Uh, I guess the, it's speed, right? I think, I think number one, startups, um, the speed is uh, great. Uh, you need to always be on your toes and always working. Uh, so there's no, like, there's no time to, there's no time to uh, put your foot off the pedal, uh, but you gotta work hard and you gotta play hard as well. You gotta enjoy the, you gotta enjoy it, and uh, you decide if you you wanna enjoy, right? I mean, you 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 set you set your goals. This is what we're gonna do, and then if I hit it, you know, let's go celebrate, right? And you celebrate as a team, and and uh, and a startup, uh, it's also a family. I think uh, it's highly, highly important that you spend not just working hours with your team, but you know, not the, your non-working hours as well. Right. Uh, and you need to bond. Uh, and that's a culture that you need to build. Uh, so, so, yeah, that's, that's the type of culture that we're, we're looking at. Cool. So I guess I won't be able to talk from a corporate um, you know, experience because I've never been, uh, I've never had a corporate job. But I've held two full-time startup jobs and um, I, I've learned quite a lot. Um, the first thing you'll notice is it's very chaotic. Um, in a good way and also in a bad way. A bad way is that, um, so corporate jobs, what I know from my friends is that when you go in, you, you kind of have a preset like career path. Like you do this, you do this, you, you, you graduate from uh, manager to you know, general manager to maybe, you know, you, you, you step up. Uh, you, you know your steps. In, in the startup world, there are no steps. Um, you and the good thing about that is that you get to decide what you want to do. Uh, you know, I, I graduated from business school. Um, I, I decided that I want to focus on marketing. I want to understand more about the different Southeast Asian markets, how consumers in these markets uh, react to the mobile space, right? And, and I get the freedom to, I don't have to wait, wait around. I don't have to ask permission. If I think like I need to go and find out more about the Malaysian market, I book a ticket. Uh, basically, I just drop my CEO a message and say, hey, look, uh, I need to go to Malaysia and speak at MNC and uh, at the same time, I need to do a few meetings. And yeah, go ahead. Um, I set my own KPIs. This is who I need to, uh, what I need to learn. This is who I need to meet. If, for example, I need to know uh, how my taxi is expand, expanding because there's also a mobile app, right? I'll just say, I've, I've got to go talk to Aaron, right? And then I call Aaron up and say, hey, let's go for coffee, like one hour. Or beer. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, or beer, yeah. So, um, yeah, in, in a sense, that's, that's, that's great. If you're not the type that uh, like to wait around, wait for permission, wait for someone to tell you what to do, um, even if it's right or wrong, if it's wrong, you know, great, you learn something that you're not supposed to do, the next time don't do it again, right, or do it better. Um, but 
Uh, so that's good part. On the bad side is that if, if, if you have no idea, uh, you have no plans for yourselves in terms of like you join a startup just because, oh, that's the only job that I got. Um, so I'm going to just go there and muck around. Um, then you find that you're just you know, going around in circles. Um, you, know, you spend a whole year just going around in circles doing the same redundant stuff without growing. Uh, growing. So I guess um, if you want to join a startup, uh, one of your, your key focus is that you want to grow, you, you are looking to grow as a person. Um, so if you have an idea of, you don't have to have the exact idea because you know, things change, um, but if you have a rough idea of where you want to get to, what are you interested to learn, and uh, you know where your strengths are, and you know where, where you can be applied, uh, then I guess you know, it, it makes it a lot clearer when you join the startup. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Obviously, we are in startups. We are going to sell uh, working in a startup. But as I've mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I got fired from my first two sort of corporate job. And I think the main difference that I feel is the motivation behind you know, working and spending my daily life, what I'm doing. Um, and when I was working in a corporate job, I think I felt like I was very unmotivated. I wasn't invested very much in the cost because I was too far away from the end user. I was too far away. There were too many people in the company, you know, and what we do is like, I feel like I'm only, you know, contributing this much. But when I was work, when, when I started my own startup, I think the motivation changed. Um, now I get to interact with my end users. I, I get to speak to them. I get to see them use my product. It, it's a great sense of satisfaction. Uh, not just as a founder, but even you know, as, a, as a team in a, in, a, in a relatively growing stage company as well. Um, and beyond just the motivation, Aaron mentioned some of this. You know, it's about bonding with your team. And this is one thing that I really like to talk about. Uh, it's about empathy. Um, you know, in many workplaces, everyone is trying to cover their own asses. Uh, that's very, very common. But when you're working in a startup, you're in a family. And when you're in a family, you have to accept the fact that you need to be open. You, know, you need to have empathy. Empathy is one of those big things. You know, understanding people's feelings in the team, like what is the motivation behind this? And on top of that, it's also about being comfortable expressing your own feeling. You know, I'm sure all of us have worked in an environment that you know, we're not happy with someone or something. And I think a good startup work culture is emphasizing the fact that you know, we want you to be free to express yourself, to, to tell you know, your colleagues, you know, like, this person is doing this, you know, give him constructive feedback. You know, don't you know, just keep it silent and stuff like that. And this creates a very happy environment, you know, working together. And ultimately, we are all about working together to accomplish more. And this is what startup culture should be. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty true. Um, I'm just going to share you my, my experience as well. Um, I used to work with a multinational company. It was really nice, you know, flying off to Belgium, Ukraine, Malaysia, Belgium, U Ukraine, Malaysia every year. Um, but there was something missing about it. Um, it was more of like, you know, kind of like the boss told you so kind of mentality. It's like, hey, um, design this. Oh, okay. And then when you go present, hey, why, why did you do this kind of stuff? boss told me so. <laughs> right. But if, when you're working with a startup, um, so with VLT Labs, we work with multiple startups, and we ourselves are a startup. Um, we work with founders, and founders are passionate people. They believe in change. They want to change the world. These guys want to change the world. I want to change the world somehow. World peace or something like that. But um, the thing is that, um, like um, Joar said, you know, it's like you don't have to wait for permission. You just have to do it. You believe it, you do it. How many, you know, how many times can you do that in a corporate letter? Uh, would you do that? Uh, because I believe in it. No, 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 no. GM says no. no that's not going to work. Right. Yeah. It's like, but you know, it has increased our revenue. No, no, it doesn't matter. GM says no, you're fired. Bam. For something good that you've done. But working in a startup, the responsibility is throughout. It's not just for the founders, but it's also for the initial team, the team itself. Everybody needs to work on the same cause. So I think that's an important part of it, right? Working towards the same cause, which is a great environment to be in. And working in that environment is creating a great culture, great working culture, an open culture. You have arguments, great, amazing. You have professional arguments, even better. Constructive arguments, even better. 
I think that's the difference between working with um, uh, multinational big companies and, and in a startup. Cool. And, and I also want to ask you guys a question because uh, this is something I experienced because um, uh, while running WAP, I don't just talk to startups, I talk to all kinds of companies. So um, one, one thing I find uh, quite interesting, and sorry if some of you work in large corporations, if you don't think this is true, uh, I'm not sure, but when I talk to, uh, say, uh, maybe a more established company or that, you know, I say, hey, we're about, you know, we're about work culture. That's what the platform is about. Uh, a lot of them don't seem to, you know, like, oh, what are you talking about? What work culture? Whereas if, I, if you talk to a, a younger company, like a startup type business, I say work culture, people get it straight away. So it's, it's very apparent to me that in a startup environment, work culture is a huge thing, right? They, they see it as something very important that they actually look at. Now, I just want to ask from a, kind of from a business perspective, you know, why, why do you guys see work culture as something that you actually focus really hard on? Uh, uh, want to, take that uh, to be honest, that's the only thing that we have against um, multinationals. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, to be honest, like, okay, so if you're working for PNG, can a startup offer you more than that? Can we offer you like, hey, dude, you get like, you know, first class flights from Singapore to Thailand every once a year. No, we don't have that. They can give you that. But we, the, the only way that we can battle with big companies, the only way that we can shake them is having great culture. Yeah. Uh, Josh, yeah, you want to take that? Sure, I think, I think adding on to uh, Iswan's uh, um, point is the, the work culture is, I, I think that's what really drives uh, people who work in startups. Um, you know, some people say, yeah, startups wake up at, at, at 10 and then go to work at 12 maybe. Um, whereas, you know, corporate guys, doing a, you're doing a 9 to 5, so technically corporate guys work longer hours. Uh, that's not true. Um, so a lot of my colleagues came from a uh, consulting background. They came from Boston Consulting Group. These are guys who work crazy hours. And when they join uh, VCNC, they say, actually, I found out that I work more than I work at BCG and McKinsey. But it doesn't feel like work. So if you, to kind of put that into perspective, I think, I think wh where I can kind of see uh, relating to an experience you, uh, students here may have is um, think about a time where you had... Uh, do you, do you guys, because I went to, to Singapore, but do you, you guys, you guys uh, did um, project work, group project works. And there are times where you're taking a, a, you have a project work in a class that you really love. And you're like four of you guys, you know, sitting in a, in, a, in a room together, completing a project, working, like burning in the midnight oil, working until like 4 a.m. the next day, and then you go to, you go to class at 8 a.m. And you feel like you're inspired, you're really, um, you don't feel tired at all. Um, whereas there are times where the classes that you, you just don't like it. It's not because it's bad, it's just that you have no interest in it. And you feel that you're forced to, uh, to do that project. And everyone's like, yeah, I'll just do my part. We just throw it together, stitch it up, rojack it together, and then, you know, you know there we have it. I guess, what, comparing that, I, I feel that same, same sense of satisfaction, that same sense of, com uh, you, know, um, um, you know, completeness in, with the, f the first example. Every time, you know, you know that if, let's say, for example, if your servers goes down, Everybody stays up, whether you are a developer, because you are bringing, you're trying to fix a problem, you are the con uh, customer service relations guy, uh, you, know, you handle um, you know, complaints from users, um, and, or even if you're business development or marketing, right, you're thinking of how do you as a team recover this situation. Right? And, then, and after you're done with it, and users all around the world send in messages like, oh, thank you so much. You, know, you brought us, uh, you know, you were offline for like three hours and you're back now. I can now communicate with my girlfriend. Everyone's like, yeah, you know, high five. Let's go back to work. So, you know, that, is, that, is, is that sense of, you know, we, it's basically we against the world. And in a startup, I think that's one thing that it's easier to find compared in corporate life. In a sense that you find, you, you get to build your, the team, or the team gets to be built around uh, the same vision. People share the same vision, and uh, when that happens, everyone's heading in the same direction. Um, it's, it's really a beauty to kind of watch. Right. Yeah. So, so I can share from, um, so why is, why is culture important? Uh, re and, and, and touching on what uh, Son said about it's, it, actually bo what both of them said, it's really, I mean, that's really our only, uh, well, it's not our only weapon, but it's a, it's a very, uh, important weapon in our arsenal against this is how we have to fight the better funded the the better uh, better team uh, that that is out there you know they have they have more money they have more people 
they have more firepower and they're better at doing things than us, right? And so how do you fight these guys? And, and obviously, some of you may or may not know, we have many competitors who are like that, who are better than us, who have more money than us, who are smarter people than us. So really all we have is just our people and our culture. And if that has truly, truly carried us through, right? This past two and a half years, uh, we have seen competitors come and go. Well, some haven't gone yet. But <laughs> you carry them. But yeah, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, but you know what's the what's, you know what's the beauty about it is that every time we have a new competitor who are better funded and have more money, they always try to go for our best guys. Right. Always. And you know what? Until today, we haven't lost a single team member to any of our competitors. Uh, even though they were offered more money, uh, even though they were offered uh, better perks, they still stayed with us. In fact. Some of our competitors, uh, people have joined us, like voluntarily. And why do they join us? It's, it's, re it's really just about culture and the people that are in our team and how we do things, right? Uh, and yeah, and, and that's what's really carried us through. Uh, hopefully, it will continue to carry us through uh, for the next few years, yeah. Cool. I think, um, okay, this is very interesting. How does it relate to business, right? Uh, I think startups, a lot of startups, you know, they, they die after a while, they just close shop. Um, so, and I think nobody really wants to be a part of a failure. Uh, we all want, obviously we, we, we try, you know, to work somewhere that will be successful. And like, you know, I met a couple of uh, my taxi guys, ex my taxi guys, um, and you know, some of them, you know, this was their first job. And because my taxi is doing so well, it looks good on them. And work culture sort of enables that from a business perspective. Um, what do we have as startups? You know, it's us against the world. And um, culture is sort of our shot at doing something really great. You know, we had a lot of great workshops throughout MSA launch. Uh, we talk about product, we talk about UX, we talk about revenue model and stuff like that. But ultimately, it's about the execution. And work culture, translates into work ethic. And work ethic, YC was there, right? Like, you know, it works both ways. And, you know, if you choose to work in a good work environment, the odds of succeeding, the, co the company's odds of succeeding is a lot better. And, you know, this is both good for, ev it's, it's good for everyone in the team. And I think from a business perspective, it just makes a lot of sense to really, really invest. You know, some of you guys want to be founders to really invest in this work culture, not just when you're growing, okay, but even if it's just both, uh, maybe just the co-founders, co uh, even the early founding teams, it means a lot because it will set the tone for the rest of it. You know, it will evolve, but, you know, it makes a big difference. Cool. And uh, just kind of adding on to it, because I know that, uh, so yesterday, uh, uh, Vision from uh, Mind Valley was here giving a talk about culture and all that. And he's he's a strong believer. I mean, he was talking about how he built a hundred million dollar business uh, just by focusing on work culture and being able to attract the right people to join. Because it's all about people, right? At the end of the day. Um, so cool. So uh, and just from uh, I guess from the people who are listening here from their perspective, but like from a, a job seeker's perspective, why you know what kind of personality do you think will actually suit being in a startup environment, because not everyone would suit this kind of uh, culture, right? I think for me, the main thing is resource resourcefulness. It's such a strong word. What, what do I mean by being resourceful? It's like, if we're solving a problem, the first thing that comes out from your mouth is not, I don't know. It's like, that's interesting. Let's figure it out. I think that's, that's a very key indicator that you should work with a startup. Because if the first thing that comes out to you, I don't know, then it's going to be tough, right? Everything that we're going to work, everything. Because again, I'm, I'm going to highlight the fact that we're, we're on a journey and on a startup. Because what, what does a journey mean? It's always ups and downs, it's always problems. But you need to go through it, to go through to survive. It sounds pretty morbid. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's, um, it's an important trait that I look at as well. Um, being responsible, meaning that you will pick up anything that's been left behind. You will pick up anything that's nobody picking up. And that will help the team move forward really well. I think resourcefulness is, is a key one for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so we, we know exactly who we want. Uh, and this person is, uh, is passionate about everything, right? 
he could be passionate about, about not just about work, but you know, he's passionate about diving, passionate right. about photography. You know, he's just passionate, um, and uh, always learning and growing. Right? This is the this is the other thing he needs. He or she needs to be. Uh, it, we also have a, a the other thing is a, uh, your problem is my problem. Right, this is, we, this is a saying we have in the company, like uh, like you said, right? You know, when if you have downtime or if you're and when we're doing releases, app releases, everyone helps to test. Actually, because we don't that time we don't have a QA team, <laughs> so everyone <laughs> tests. But yeah, customer service, uh, business guys, analytics, everyone tests. So your problem is my problem. It's not like, uh, oh, I already done my part. Uh, so we say like, hey, why isn't this working? Oh, I did my part, right? I said, that does not work in the startup, right? Every, your problem is my problem. Like, even though I do design, I also want to make sure that the engineering guys are doing their job well. I want to help them if they need help. I will help test uh, as well. So your problem is my problem. Uh, the other thing is about family. We talked about uh, right. bonding. Yep. So this person needs to be, he, he cannot be, uh, he cannot be, uh, how do you say? Asshole. Yes. <laughs> we don't like assholes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we don't like them. No matter how talented you are, you can be like this rock star uh, coder or salesman or whatever it is, right? We don't care, right? You just got to get along with people, right? Um, and yeah, and basically, if you embody uh, this, uh, f how many was that? Five things. Uh, These five things, then yeah then you, you can work, uh, you should come and see us. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll be right outside. Uh, so, so yes, um, and yeah, just to share with you a, a quick story about attracting talent, right? Right, yeah. So, uh, we, so we recently, very luckily, uh, we have a new CTO. So I used to be the CTO, but I know I'm not good enough at this stage. Right. We need to be better. And that's also the a kind of person that you need to know that, you know, when you're, you're just, well, but that's a different story, but basically we need to level up, right? Uh, so, so we found this guy, um, he's ex-Facebook, employee 90, 90, uh, co-inventor of Facebook Connect API, a lead engineer at, on, at, on Facebook Messenger. And he, so he was packed, right? He was in Singapore, he, was, he already packed his bags to go back to, to the valley. He was in Singapore for two years. He was going to pack his back to the valley, and uh, he said, no, oh, bro, just come and fly down to KL, you all know, right. be with the team and all that stuff, check it out. And he came down, and he spent a week with us, and then he said, like, yeah, it's like, I want to be here. And this guy used to be in Microsoft and Facebook in the early days, and he could see that, you know, I'm not saying we have Facebook, but... I, I mean, we're, we're doing something right. Uh, I don't know what it is that we're doing right. I hope that some business guy, management consultant can put it in a piece of uh, document to say this is what you're doing right. One, two, three, four, five things. But you know, we just do what we do, go with the flow, and uh, if you embody this, this culture and these values, then yeah, you can, can join our team. Cool. I think being fearless and positive is, uh, plays a big, big role as well. I think, you know, um, I think naturally, a lot of us sometimes, you know, we want to conform to things. But, you know, being fearless allows you to try new things. And, you know, in a startup, it's all about trying new things. You know, it, we, we shouldn't be afraid of failure. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to feel like someone's more than you cannot contribute. You can always be very honest and say, you know, I think this is a good idea. Uh, and being fearless and positive allows you to do that. Um, and even if you don't have it, this can be developed. Um, you know, many of us, we don't, we are not naturally, you know, confident or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, try to develop those qualities and it will it, it'll, it'll be the best feeling of your life to, you know, contribute something and see it in action. All right, cool. So I think uh, we probably have like five or ten minutes left. So I'm just going to move to some of the questions that have uh, been tweeted to us. Um, so one question was... Uh, Fail fast, succeed faster, uh, but how do you get back in the game as soon as possible when you've had a critical failure? Um, someone want to answer that? Yeah, I, I, you, 
Well, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. you know, tell us what happens at five o'clock. <laughs> basically, oh my, <laughs> oh my god, every Friday was a nightmare for us. <laughs> uh, yeah, f- lots and lots of. I mean, d- actually, to be honest, this year was r- quite a bad year for us uh, in terms of uh, we've had many failures. Uh, but yeah, you just need to be able to pick yourself up and, and just power forward, right? And uh, otherwise, we'll just lose uh, the game and lose the plot. But yeah, I mean, just be able to just pick yourself up again, uh, motivate everyone again. Because there was a point when we were all down, right? We were all really just demotivated to work. Because every single time we would just fail and it, there was no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but as a team, we stuck together. Uh, we try to bring in new talent to look at the problems differently. And, uh, and yeah, uh, and, and, and that was my point, right? I mean, uh, you know, under, so, so we were failing under my watch. So I knew that I need, we, need to, we need to take a step back and say, no, we need, we need like a kick-ass uh, team to help us, right? Or person or whatever it is. And, and, and so we did that. Uh, and uh, so don't be afraid to ask for help. Right. I think so. Pick yourself up when you're down. Don't be afraid to ask for help. So we went out there and said, we need help. There's no one in Southeast Asia that we can find that is willing to work with us uh, to solve our problem. So we just kept asking everyone, like everyone, like, you know anyone, you know anyone, you know anyone <laughs> can help us with our scaling, scaling issues, basically. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, basically, that's, that's two things. Cool. We'll so, uh, so we do one more answer, then I'll try to get through as many questions yeah. as we can, and we move yeah. on to the next I, one. So, I think yeah. um, it's important to show up. Uh, what, what does it mean by showing up, right? It's like you might be dumb, down in the dumps. Um, you might, your startup might be closed the next day because things are just not working out. Like one of the things that, that we went through was um, our first startup that we worked with. Uh, was like, okay, cool. We know what you're going to build. We're going to set up a team. It took us a week, and it was pretty quick, right, a week to set up a team. We came back to the startup. Hey, guys, um, we're ready to kick off the project. Oh, dude, uh, we solved the problem. And like, okay. Oh, that's really bad. And, and that, right. that was our first client. It didn't really work out. Um, we were really down about it. But the next day, you just have to show up. Again, you will go through it again. You will go through the down, the deep, the darkest spot again and again. Um, but you just have to show up. All right, cool. Uh, so another question here. How, how do you empower service team members to take ownership of customer issues or complaints? Service, uh, how do you service. empower service team members uh, to take ownership of customer issues or complaints? Okay, this is very tricky. Um, so obviously, we don't exactly do that. You know, we are a technology company. But um, as in, as in, when I mean I, we don't do that, uh, what I mean is we don't help enterprises with their customer service team per se. We supply the technology. But if we talk about empowering them to you know really really resolve the the problems that customers have i think this is one of those things that is really really hard to deal with uh because you know a lot of times the customer service team they don't feel very very invested a lot of times um and i think this will be the job of you know maybe hr or managers to really find people that has that that have this really strong passion to make people happy and focus on the end goal about making people happy it's it's very hard to deal with people who are customers who are angry customers who are complaining nonstop um, they're being harsh to you they're not being reasonable but ultimately look at the end goal what are you trying to do you want to make these people happy and it, it, it requires a lot of humility to do that. Um, and it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. That's why one of, the, one of the jobs that I really respect are people who work in the hospitality industry. Um, you know, people who serve you. Um, they really put themselves down there to serve you. And I think it's, it's a quality that we all can develop. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think we have quite a few questions on Twitter, but uh, in case, uh, is there anyone in this room who didn't tweet a question but actually have one that want to ask the guys that are sitting here? 
you have any questions? Okay, just go on to the next one then. Um, you have a question, all right? Right, so, so, uh, so your question is, uh, obviously the, the guys have worked overseas before, so what's the Malaysia workforce like compared to what's overseas? Right, okay. Uh, I've never worked overseas. So. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, yes, do you want to take that question? Um, so just a background before that. Um, so over my overseas means basically, I think, um, Singapore. And because VCNC, we have teams based in tai uh, Taiwanese team, Korean teams, Japanese teams, Malaysia, Thailand, in some sense. So that's overse uh, overseas. Um, where, where I see our strengths is, the, um, I think for Malaysia, um, most importantly, uh, our strength lies in being able to operate and understand Southeast Asia. Uh, we are, most of us are multilingual, so which means we can easily operate in all English-speaking markets. Um, China, most Chinese-speaking markets, uh, Malay, um, you cross across maybe even Indonesia, which is actually a very, very important market for Southeast Asia. So, you know, Malaysians coming in from that background, yes. Uh, you, we are also exposed to more cultures. So we understand um, Malaysian culture, Singaporean culture, not a lot of difference. Um, maybe some Thai culture. Uh, a lot of us follow Korean and Japanese uh, entertainment stuff. So we understand a lot of that. Um, if you think about that, that the way we, we are very, in, in some sense, we are very prepped to understand and to operate, at least in Southeast Asia, or even better, you know, Asia or global. Um, where I guess our weakness could be in terms of just looking at the startup is, is, is being mainly because the ecosystem is a bit newer, right? It's a bit younger. So, um, you know, not a lot of people have the experience working in startups, understanding startups. I myself, when I, when I first learned about startups, I had no idea what startups were. I only knew something called Facebook. I didn't know that, you know, Twitter. Um, and, and that's where I really saw the value in terms of investing my time, uh, joining E27, you know, to, as an intern, as an intern to, to, to work and learn. Um, so I guess we may not be very... Um, um, startup savvy in some sense. You will not know what's what are the biggest, uh, you know, like how did Dropbox become, you know, so big? How did Facebook become a, a, a you know, couple of billion dollars company, right? Um, but we definitely know how to take products like this, right? Once we understand this product, how do we adapt it? How do we uh, make users want it? And that's pretty much what I do. Like, how, what do couples in this region like? What do they, what do they usually uh, do on, on date nights, how do they communicate differently from each other compared to the, you know, the Koreans and the Japanese, which is like totally different. And we make it work here. Uh, I have a quick comment. Right. But I, I, I pl personally don't see it as local and overseas. I, I, I feel that it's really a, the, the, the world is it's already shrinking. It's really what kind of culture that you want to put out there, you know? And you will attract the, that kind of people that want to be part of their culture and be part of it. And that person, maybe Malaysian, maybe overseas, doesn't matter actually. I mean, who cares, right? Like, like it could be anyone. What's important is uh, he embodies all those cultural values. And I'll say the only strength that uh, locals have over all these masales is they can eat more spicy food. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have any other strength. That's always apart very from that. Yeah. Yeah. I, have, I have a quick one to say yeah, as yeah, well. Okay. Um, this is very funny because last year I was in San Francisco and this, uh, I was telling this guy about what I want to do, what I, what I was doing, and I told him that I want to do what I love. And he immediately mentioned, oh, you're being, being Americanized. <laughs> um, but, you know, Having worked a little while in the States, uh, and then you know my company is actually based in Singapore, and then uh, we work with two remote developers in Indonesia. You know what, honestly, we are equally as good, if not better. We have the ability to do it. And it's up to us, it's a choice. You know, we are equally as passionate, we are equally as capable. You can see from out there in the world, there are tons of Malaysians doing so well out there. And it's not really about where you're from, your culture, how you grew up. It's about the choices you make in life. And 
this choice, only you can make it. You know, we, we can say as much as we want, but ultimately, choose to do it. Make, uh, us, make us proud. Yeah, make Malaysians proud. I'm, I'm just going to disagree with Aaron for a bit. Oh, right? oh, 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 so, oh, so you know some oh, masalis? Oh, oh, oh. You know some masalis really <laughs> spicy food? I, 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 actually, actually, I do, I do, I do. Um, so I, I really think that, um, you know, other than the fact that we eat, can eat spicy food, it's just the fact that we understand this region that makes us a lot being a lot better to... Um, I mean, yes, you could, you could employ a foreigner, you know, Matsale, whatever, um, to, to work for your company, you know, focus on Malaysia. But he may be great. He may be great at doing digital marketing, right? He may be great at running the, the best ad campaigns, but to a certain extent, because he doesn't know what makes Malaysians tick, right? It, it, it's that one small thing that really makes you... When, when, you, when you look at a global pro, uh, product, so like between our global product, when we come to each country, we want to make sure that it feels local enough that our users will want to use it, right? So how do you give that Malaysian flavor to between? It's a South Korean app. It started in South Korea. No one knew that it was in South Korea. A lot of people thought it was in Silicon Valley uh, startup, right? I mean, it was, when we were in Japan, and it's not easy for a foreign company to, to, to penetrate Japan because Japanese are very sensitive about external culture. And we are 1.3 million users there. You know, it's not so easy to reach that in, in within one year, right? We, we are almost as local as our local competitors in Japan. And the main reason is because we understand the power of the local. Um, you know, hiring local people to, to expand the Japanese market, we had Japanese. Uh, to understand Southeast Asia, we built a Southeast Asian team. And I, I think a lot of the companies, and that's why if you're thinking of working in a startup, you can look at, uh, yes, I mean, it's great to look at Malaysian startups, which is you know, supporting your own uh, uh, industries as well. But at the same time, you, have, you see a lot of opportunities in terms of startups coming in from Japan, startups coming in from Silicon Valley, and they want, to, they want a piece of Southeast Asia. And as Malaysians, we are primed in a way that we understand Southeast Asia a lot. And if you think about it, the head of Evernote who takes APEC New Zealand, he's Malaysian. The guy who uh, had new markets for Spotify, who opened most of the main new markets in Asia, he's Malaysian, right? And you think about it, and, I mean, agreeing with Josh, it's like a lot of Malaysian guys uh, or girls, you know, uh, and girls are doing great stuff for startup space in Malaysia, startup space outside of Malaysia, in regions, you know, basically playing to their strengths, which is Southeast Asia, Asia. Right, so to un you really need to understand like where are your strengths. Um, you know, language is one. Understanding culture is one. Being able to connect. Um, you wouldn't expect. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but you wouldn't expect a matzale or, or you know to be able to connect <laughs> as well as your Malaysian co consumers, even your Indonesian consumers. Malaysians connect way better with Indonesians than than uh, you know someone from outside the region, for example. All right. Cool. Um, I think we, we're probably running out of time, but there is this one question on Twitter that people seem to be favoriting, so I will have to ask oh. this question. Um, uh, so it's the last question. So how, how, how does a startup handle rapid growth and expansion uh, without sacrificing their reputation? And I'm going to kind of add on to that. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe also uh, preserving their identity as a startup. Uh, I imagine you would rapid answer growth. that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, I think when rapid growth, uh, taking in uh, more money, uh, all these things can change right. can change you as a startup. It can it can sometimes make you forget your roots and why why you why you why you started this in the first place or why did you join this company in the first place? And I think it is uh, it is the responsibility of the leader leadership uh, to make sure that that first of all, they don't forget their roots and they don't forget why it, we, we started doing this. Um, and, and then making sure that, that it, is trans, it, is, uh, it flows down and cascades throughout the organization. I mean, we, find, we struggle, I, I, we do struggle to, to flow it down to every single person, to the, to the field agent who's selling to the driver, uh, uh, in the petrol station and stuff like that, you know, we we I mean we like I said we're close to 500 people now. It's tough, uh, but but yeah, I mean you you just gotta you just gotta start somewhere. So it starts from the top. Make sure that second level, third level, everyone just embodies that this is why we're here. This is why we come to work every day, and uh, and make sure that those who don't 
uh, who don't agree or who can't, uh, who can't cope, uh, that we need to get rid of them. So that's how we try right. to manage it. Okay. Yeah. I think one thing as well, I mean, like, this, this is it, right? This is, this is the truth. Um, how many big companies, multinationals are going to say that to you guys? What the, the pain that they're going through. This is, this is real right here. This is a startup. Um, so I, I think one thing that, that I would like to add as well is, oh, it just slipped my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, one thing I want to add as well of growing is that you do need to find your champions. Your right. champions at every point. Okay. And iterate your vision over and over again. Even like for us, uh, a team of nine people, sometimes we just get too busy that we forgot to share the vision and everybody just gets jaded. Even for us, even some, sometimes I get jaded. But then again, if you sit down and think and really calm yourself down and go like, yes, this is the vision, share the vision back again to your team over and over again. I think that's important. I guess for VCNC, um, um, how we kind of, so currently we're operating around, um, our users about over 9.2 million users worldwide, and we have a head count, global head count of about 35 of us. And uh, how we kind of um, prevent that dilution in terms, even though our, our growth is really rapid, we, we expand into like four markets within uh, additional two markets in the last year. Um, we actually cap our actual employment. We, we are always looking in terms of hiring because you know um, there are a lot of smart people out there, but the smart people that fit um, your culture and your vision, uh, you don't you rarely bump you, when you bump them, you just need to get them. Um, but that said, we, we also ma ma understand that we operate in right now at least four countries. Our teams are spread all around, so we don't spend as much face time as we like with each other. Um, so the culture has to be uh, spread well enough. Um, so that's why we kind of put a cap in the sense that if we know that, say, um, Taiwan is a market that's really important right now and we need to hire at least like two people, um, and that's going to cross you know, our, our minimum number of people that we can bring in and allow them to absorb the culture properly, then the rest of the team just has to suck it up for a while um, and you know, we work a bit harder to cope with the load uh, on our side. Uh, the reason is because short term, yes, it's going to be stressful, but in the long term, you're thinking about communicating with people uh, based in different time zones, different countries, different culture, different language, um, you know, not everyone's an opa now, um, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, because we're not all Koreans. And, um, you know, that, that just helps in understanding. And the problem with that, you know, if you don't look at it properly, when conflicts arise, then it's going to be a massive, massive, uh, you know, shithole to kind of clear up. Because you've got someone who's trying to explain himself in, uh, who is more fluent in, in Korean than English but he's doing it in English, and then you know, someone else is translating that English into Japanese and then interpreting that you know, in his head and then you know, trying to argue back. That's gonna, it's, 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 a, it's a crazy kind of like, um, interaction. Um, so to keep that, we, we actually put a kind of like an artificial cap in a way to make sure that, uh, so our onboarding process is we have a team member that joins us, um, most of the time he spends at least one month uh, with our main team, either the main team in South Korea or the main team that he or she is uh, going to work with um, um, for the rest of his career, or basically when he's with the team, um, just to make sure that you know, we create that chemistry. And then only then we start looking uh, again. Right, cool. So uh, I think that's uh, all the time we have uh, for this session. So I'd like to thank uh, uh, Josh, uh, Aaron, Joash, and Izvan. Uh, for you know, for their time. Hopefully, you guys have a better understanding of what it's like to work in a startup. And uh, for those of you who haven't had a chance to walk around the career fair yet, you know, go go meet some of the people who are making all the magic happen. All right. Thanks very much. <laughs>